Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new to making CNC lasers or 3D printing, you might be overwhelmed by all the new terms, concepts, and things that you need to learn to be successful. CNC in particular has a steep learning curve, much steeper than 3D printing or lasers in my opinion. One area that I routinely get questions about is how to take a picture and turn it into something that a CNC can use. Today I'm going to cover the differences between raster formats and vector formats. These two formats are the most common image formats and knowing the differences between these two is essential to becoming a successful maker. By the end of this video hopefully you will understand the differences and know when to use which format and be armed with the background and skills to tackle your next making project. So what is a raster file versus a vector file anyway? Well, a raster file is a format used by computers to digitally encode pictures, photographs, and videos for use, storage, and transmission. Raster files are discrete digital representations of what is an otherwise infinite continuum of values that our eyes see. Now, I don't want to dive too deeply into information encoding theory here, but I do want to give a basic overview of what raster files are and why they will never really be a perfect representation of the original image. Digital encoding is a lossless encoding technique. That is, when you digitally encode something, you lose information. That is simply a fact. You lose information because you are taking in an infinite series of analog values and encoding them into a finite series of digital values. The amount of information loss is directly equivalent to the amount of digital values you use, how often you sample the signal, and any possible compression that you might leverage. Raster files in particular break images down into a series of individual pixels and then encode those pixels as digital values. The pixels are stored as an array with each cell in the array representing details about the pixel which represents the original image. The amount of information conveyed by each pixel is dependent on a number of factors and I won't dive deeply into those details for this video. If you are interested I will leave links in the description below for more information. Now, how accurately a raster image represents the original image is completely dependent on the number of pixels and the information contained within each pixel. So for example, if a pixel can only represent two colors, say black and white, then the raster version of a color picture will lose all that color information. By extension, if the pixel can capture various grayscales, you will lose the colors, but you've regained some of that realism of the original image with that additional grayscale colors, but it will still not be a true representation of the original image. To accurately represent a full color picture as a raster file, you need to encode each pixel with full color depth, as well as other properties that allows the computer to recreate that image with the highest degree of accuracy. A single static image can contain millions of pixels and the size of the file really comes down to how many pixels are encoded and how they are encoded. The density of the pictures is usually referred to as dots per inch or pixels per inch and contributes to how accurately the digital image represents the original image. Taking this concept one step further, video files are simply a series of individual images strung together in time. When played back, you get that motion picture effect. For a video file, images are recorded at a specific rate, usually called the frame rate. As long as you play the recorded images back at the same rate, you will get an accurate recreation of the original action. How crisp the video seems is usually dependent on the resolution of the image rather than the frame rate. So at this point you're probably wondering why we simply don't increase the amount of information in each pixel and the number of pixels to create the best possible representation of the original image. Well, that is simply a matter of physics. The more information encoded and the more pixels grabbed means the more data that needs to be moved around during the encoding process. There is a limit to how much data processors can move without becoming overwhelmed and that is generally the limiting factor for things like frame rate and resolution. 
Okay, so now that we know a raster file is a digital representation of a real world image, and it has some limitations on how accurately it can reproduce the original image. What about vector files? What makes them different? Unlike raster files, vector files use mathematical formulas to precisely represent the artifacts contained within the image. Because the presentation is encoded as a mathematical formula, you essentially get infinite resolution. That is, vectors can be scaled up and down without losing any quality in the image representation. This makes vector files perfect for encoding images that need to be scaled up significantly. Okay, so why don't we use vector files for every image then? Well, it's nearly impossible to create mathematical formulas for complicated pictures and photographs. Vector files are best suited for images that are constructed from primitive geographic shapes like points, lines, curves, and polygons. That is why most clip art is encoded as vector files, whereas photographs and videos are encoded as pixels. So now is a good time to say if you're getting value out of this video, please hit that like button. It really does help the channel. So now that we understand the difference between raster and vector files, why does this matter to you? Well, if you're a maker, then it all comes down to information loss and your ability to recreate the original image with a high degree of accuracy. Machines like CNC and laser cutters and 3D printers make things by adding or subtracting material in two or three dimensional space. The machines can only move in three directions using basic movements such as lines and curves. This is precisely why modern computer controlled machines use vector files almost exclusively. Vector files allow the machine to accurately recreate the image at any scale and any resolution. This takes a lot of the guesswork out of the digital manufacturing processes. Okay, so let's say you have a JPEG or a PNG and you want to use it for your CNC. What are your options? Well, the easiest solution is to convert your raster file into a vector file. There are many utilities that allow you to convert files from one format to another. Some formats are easier to convert than others, and it is usually fairly difficult to convert a raster file to a vector file and keep all the details. Nevertheless, there are programs that can do it. Some are on the web and some are free to use. Some are free client side programs and some are paid applications or websites. My favorite client application that I've been using for years is Inkscape. Inkscape is an open source vector program that is similar to Adobe Illustrator, but without that hefty price tag. In my experience, previous versions of Inkscape did a better job at converting raster files to vector files than the most recent versions, but they are still pretty good. It usually takes some playing around with the settings to get a good conversion, but once you nail the details, the results are very good and readily usable. Conversely, you can find many websites that offer raster to vector conversions. All that said, many of them advertise free conversions, but they attempt to charge you a fee before you can download your vector file. It seems there's been a massive push recently to monetize file conversions, and most of the sites are not even being remotely transparent about their fees. If you are interested in my thoughts about the future of open, free software, you might want to check out this video right here. Of the sites I found, Convertio seems to offer one of the best conversions without any fees, at least for now. I have no affiliation with them, but I will leave a link in the description if you choose to use their site. Other sites like Autotracer and Vectorization.eu are also free, but I found the results to be relatively mixed. Sometimes they work great, and other times not so much. I have not found that magic formula with the variables that guarantees great results each time with these sites. In the end, you will likely have to play around with the settings and try a couple different options before you can get a good conversion. If you don't want to use a conversion tool or a website, then you can manually redraw the image using a vector program. This might sound time consuming, but in some cases it's actually faster than converting the file and then fixing all the issues with the conversion. Again, Inkscape is a good option for manual work, and my new favorite vector tool is Affinity Designer. I highly recommend both, with Affinity being significantly more polished and more snappy performance than Inkscape. With more complex color images, manually redrawing the image might not be possible or simply might be too time consuming, so you might be forced to use a converter. 
In this case, look out for converters that create a lot of open vectors. You want your conversion to have all closed vectors because that is what your CNC or your laser machine needs to use. Finally, there are other options such as Fiverr where you can hire people to convert files for you for a small fee. If time is money, then this might be your best overall option. All right, so now you know the difference between rasters and vectors, and now you want to start converting raster files into vectors. How do you do that? Well, that's best left for this video right here. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button or sharing it with someone who might find value in it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.